Hi, in this video I wanted to explore a little project that I'm working on. Um, so often when I'm building up my electronics, um, I've got all of my surface mount components in their tapes like this. Uh, but when you try and pick them up with tweezers, you can't actually get the components out of these um, tapes. And sometimes you don't want to just empty them all out on the desk because they've got polarization markers or um, you're trying to deal with a few different component values. So you want to keep them organized in their strips. So over the past few years, I've been collecting various bits and bobs and never actually got around to making uh, the pickup tool. Um, but I did manage to pick up the pencil from Weller. Uh, I think this was quite expensive actually, it was like £40 or something silly. Um, you can make one from uh, one of the cheap pickup tools and, and using a bit of um, flexible silicone hose or something, you can, you can create a very similar tool. Um, although this one is quite ergonomic and fits quite nicely. Uh, in the hand, but the idea with this one is you apply um, some kind of vacuum to the end of the hose and then when you place the tip over the component the vacuum uh, keeps the component on the tip and I think it did come with a few suction cups as well um, for um, different size components. Um, but what I found looking on the market is there aren't really many purpose-built tools. I think the one from Weller just has a constant um, vacuum applied to the tube and there is a little hole on here, um, but in quick testing, just with a vacuum pump, um, the situation is either um, you apply a vacuum and you try and pick up your component. It picks up the component just fine, but even if you uh, release your finger from the hole, there's still enough of a vacuum to um, keep the component attached to the end. And if you turn it down to the point where you release your finger and the component drops, um, there's not actually enough to pick it up in the first place. So um, what I wanted to build was something with a, a foot pedal. Um, so I picked up this foot pedal, I think it's a guitar pedal or something like that. Um, and the idea is that it will control a solenoid and will control the, the vacuum to the pickup tool. Right, so these are the main components that I was thinking about using, but I'm not quite sure what form uh, this is gonna take because there's gonna be a little bit of experimentation. Um, so the situation is, uh, first of all, we've got a, uh, an air filter. So this would be uh, the last thing between the pickup pencil and the rest of the pneumatics. And the idea is that if it collects any debris or uh, some very small components or d dust or whatever, it gets blocked by this 15 micron filter uh, and doesn't end up in any of the other components. So I think this is a, an SMC branded um, filter, a fairly standard piece. Uh, and it's just got push fit fittings for the pneumatics. Uh, we've got the solenoid, which we can use to control the airflow. Um, in this case, we've got a regulator as well, which would connect to the air compressor, and we can use this to adjust um, the air pressure being drawn by the vacuum pump. And then this is the vacuum pump, and this is a Venturi-based vacuum pump. So there's three ports on here, one here, one here, and one at the bottom. And the idea is that you have an airflow through this device, so your compressed air supply comes in here and is exhausted out this end. And when it goes through here, it picks up um, a vacuum from this bottom port via the Venturi effect. So you have air coming through here and it pulls in air also from the vacuum port. Um, what I don't know about this at the moment is sort of how much airflow it's going to need to create the vacuum that we need for this pickup pencil. Um, so I've got a, a really small compressor under the desk. It's one of those mini silent ones. Um, it's probably only got sort of a, it's, I think it's a 15 litre compressor, so it doesn't have a huge air capacity. So if you're drawing loads of air all the time, it will kick in quite regularly. And if this needs loads of air in order to develop the uh, vacuum that we need for the pencil, uh, it's gonna get pretty annoying quite quick, I would have thought. So if the testing with the compressor doesn't work out, one thing we could use is some pumps instead. So both of these types of pumps are suitable for use as vacuum pumps. This one is a, um, a piston pump. It's got a brushless motor here, um, and then there's a, a couple of diaphragms in here and a piston, uh, which are used to develop a vacuum or to pump out with pressure. The problem with these particular types of pumps is, first of all, they're quite noisy, uh, but also, if you shut off the air supply while the pump's running, it has a tendency to stall the pump uh, and then it draws loads of current and gets hot and uh, is generally not that good for it. And you can't just control the power to this instead of the valve because it takes a while to build up a bit of vacuum and for the vacuum to decay. So if you were 
you know, pressing the pedal to place components quite quickly. This would be pul pulsing on and off, but you wouldn't really get that same effect at the end of the tool. So um, the other option that we could look at potentially is um, this is a diaphragm pump, um, a bit like uh, an air pump for an aquarium. And what it's got in it is an electromagnet arrangement uh, connected to the AC. Uh, so there's no commutation um, other than a magnetic field between it and the diaphragm in here. So you've sort of got your iron core, it's like a half a transformer, and a little um, stick inside it which um, presses against two uh, bellows in here to create the vacuum. And if you do happen to um, block off one of the ports completely, uh, all that happens is the excursion on that little arm is less, but it doesn't um, cause the pump to get overly hot or anything like that. So uh, we could potentially sort of leave this one running and just control the vacuum with the solenoid pump as another option. Um, but we'll, um, we'll start off by um, sort of drawing a quick schematic of how we're going to connect this up and then we'll give it a test with the compressor first. So this is the basic schematic of the pneumatic system using the compressor that we're going to try. Um, so the compressor is set to 90 psi and then it's going to go into this uh, regulator. Uh, it may be that a regulator is not the appropriate choice. We might not want to change the air pressure. We might want to just change the air flow rate. Um, so I have got a, uh, a standard valve as well that we can just close down to um, reduce the airflow. Then we've got the solenoid. Uh, this is a three port solenoid. So um, it basically works like a a single pole double throw switch. Um, so you've got one input port or one output port that can switch between two others. Um, and then that will be controlled by the foot pedal. We won't be able to do that directly um, because the foot pedal I don't think is going to be rated for uh, the current of this relay. So, um, uh, sorry, of this solenoid. So we might need a relay in there. Uh, then that will go through to the um, vacuum pump here. Uh, and one side will just be an exhaust. Um, you can't really cover this end because if you cover this end all that happens is all of the air comes out what's supposed to be the vacuum port. So this end just sort of gets left open. Uh, then we're going to have our filter um, to stop any debris from going through into the vacuum pump. Uh, and then the last bit is just going to be our handpiece. Right, so I've just used a little relay here to control the power to the solenoid. Uh, and then the input from the foot pedal just comes in via this 6.35 millimeter jack. Um, one thing I have noticed is this air regulator uh, does purposely have a leak while it's maintaining um, the set pressure set by the dial on the top. So even without doing anything, that compressor is kicking in every uh, five minutes or so. Um, so this regulator may not be the best choice. It might be worth switching to this. We'll give it a test in a minute. Um, but we've got this set to um, a relatively low pressure on here, uh, less than 0.5 megapascals. Um, but it does seem to pick up these components okay. Um, so that's a 12, uh, 12.06 I think. We've got an 0.805 here. But I've got no problem picking these up. And if we try and take them out of the tape, We just need slightly more suction than that. So that seems to work pretty well. Let me see if we can pick up a uh, bigger component. So this is a 64 pin TQFP. Uh, this is one of the ones that's going to be used on the lighting project potentially. Um, I don't think it'll work without one of the suction cups but we can give it a go. No, it's not quite got enough. Let's um, try turning up the pressure. So it will pick it up with more airflow. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. We can turn it back down again. Let's try it with one of the suction cups on the end. So, almost. Oh yeah, it works. That's not too bad. Yeah, so um, that does actually work not too badly. It does need a little bit more air, I think, to pick up something a little bit bigger. And the trade-off really is just um, that that compressor is going to kick on and off quite rapidly with that. You can hear it's just come on there. 
it's going to kick in fairly rapidly if we're moving uh, large components with higher airflow. Right, so I've swapped the regulator for this valve, but it doesn't really give the desired effect. I've got this valve almost closed off fully. Uh, hopefully the, camp, the um, microphone will pick this up. But you can hear you sort of get a big rush of airflow and then it dwindles down to the actual dynamic flow rate that's set by this um, valve. And I guess it makes sense. What's happening is this is closed down almost fully. Uh, and then when the solenoid's closed, you're building up pressure in this tube. And then when you activate the solenoid, all of that pressure is released really quickly and then you get down to the dynamic flow rate. So you sort of get an impulse of high, high um, flow rate and then down to a lower flow rate. Um, whether that causes a problem, I'm not sure. So let's try picking up uh, one of these TQFP packages. So I think we need more airflow than that anyway. So it does work okay. Let's try picking up um, some of the resistors instead. So I think that's a generally higher flow rate anyway, but um, yeah, the pressure regulator definitely works a lot better. It's just that it's got that leak. It's coming out a little port in the side. Uh, I'm not sure if that's specific to um, this particular regulator or whether that's um, you know a generic thing. There is a regulator on the compressor um, which doesn't seem to leak in the same way. So I'm not really sure whether that's necessary or what happens if you block it up. I'll have to um, have a look at the data sheet. Um, but what we can do now is I think we'll try and see what happens with one of these pumps instead uh, connected in place of um, everything here apart from the solenoid. This time we've just got the pump attached to the solenoid, and then we've got our filter and then the pickup tool. Uh, I've got the isolation transformer connected to the pump just because we've got the wires hanging around uh, on a terminal block and uh, I haven't got the earth connected to the chassis of this. So we'll just turn it on. And I'm not sure if that comes out on camera, but that's a fairly inoffensive sound. Um, it just sounds like a standard sort of aquarium air pump. Um, so let's give it a go and see how well this works. So it's certainly having no problem there with the... Um, we've got an 0805 that it picked up fine and these um, 1206s. And it seems to pick up these 64 pin packages no problem uh, even without the uh, little suction cup that I've just put on now. So that doesn't work too badly actually. Um, that might potentially be a better solution. Uh, maybe we could come up with some kind of circuit that turns off the pump if there's no foot pedal being pressed for I don't know, like half a minute or some other time um, so that it's not just sitting there the whole time uh, pumping away but um, that's certainly a lot simpler and means that I don't have to have the compressor on in order to um, use the pickup tool it's just um, whether this pump will be too noisy I'm probably going to put it in a little uh, metal case um, whatever arrangement we come up with is probably going to be in a little metal case like this um, which I've had sitting around for absolutely ages. I think I was going to build a power supply at some point, but um, this looks like it will. Um, this looks like it will fit inside here, no problem. Um, from just a quick cursory glance, so there's probably enough room for that and the relay and the solenoid. Um, it might be worth having the filter external to the casework so that it can be cleaned out. But um, yeah, provided that doesn't sort of resonate inside that metal case, this might be a better solution uh, just from the fact that all you would need then is just to provide power and the thing would work. So I had a little think about the best way to proceed. Um, I did like the idea of using the, um, the little vacuum pump thing. This was quite cool and um, you know it sort of just works um, but the problem is that the air compressor um, does need to be enabled and it kicks in and out and it does get a little bit annoying after a while. Uh, 
Unfortunately, my lab here is completely the opposite side of the house to the garage. In the old house, the garage was linked, so I could bring in the, the um, air supply from my compressor in the garage, but um, I've got a massive 350 litre compressor in the garage with a four horsepower motor, so I'd never run out of air. Uh, it's just unfortunately, there's no way of getting the air from the garage to here. Um, so I do have to use this little compressor that's uh, under the desk. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this um, diaphragm pump and what I've done is I've basically hijacked the schematic from the soft start controller that I built for the Variac. Um, so it already had most of the things that we'd actually need. Um, the power supply remains unchanged. Um, it was designed for a lower voltage AC input, but this will happily accept 24 volts uh, DC. And I've got loads of little power supplies like this one here um, that I can use to provide the 24 volts for the electronics and for the solenoid. Uh, I think this is one by XP Power. Um, but I've got some other little modules, including ones that are enclosed. And I think they have a little dial on it as well, so we can dial down the voltage a little bit. This um, solenoid um, does run on 24 volts, but it does get a little bit warm over time, and it actually works down to about 15 volts. So we could probably set it to about 20 volts or something like that and reduce the dissipation in the circuit here. Um, we already had two outputs suitable for driving coils or relays. Um, so now one of them is purposed as the... Um, the solenoid output and the other one will control the relay uh, which um, probably this exact relay actually or we could control an SSR uh, but this one will be fine for turning the mains on and off to the pump from a 24 volt supply. Uh, the microcontroller circuit just controls these outputs and we've got an RGB LED output on the board um, so we can use that to uh, provide an indication and then as we spoke about um, I thought it'd be quite cool to have a little knob on the front of the unit so that the device sort of went into standby mode if you hadn't pressed the foot pedal for a certain period of time. So we've just got an op-amp buffer here uh, with an RC filter that will go into the ADC on this uh, microcontroller. And simply we could just set it so that um, you know at one end of the dial the pump turns off like a second after you release the foot pedal and if you turn it all the other way it, it's uh, two minutes or something like that afterwards. Um, and that just means that, um, you know, if you get distracted for a minute while you're doing some work, you haven't got the pump running the whole time. Uh, and then we've just got the input here that would go from the foot pedal. So, um, yeah, I quickly hijacked the design, modified the PCB slightly and increased the size slightly. It's not this big. I've, I've blown it up to double size um, for the video. Um, but the other PCB was a little bit small um, and the mounting points were in slightly awkward places so I've just made this whole thing slightly bigger uh, and I've already sent out the design to um, JLC PCB because uh, I was sending out the design for the lighting controller um, so I may as well uh, get that made at the same time. So uh, in the next video we'll put this whole thing together, uh, I'll hopefully have written a bit of firmware in time and um, yeah we'll have a, a functional uh, vacuum pickup tool uh, that we'll be able to use in future projects. Um, there is a little kit that I got, um, a VU meter, uh, with a whole load of 0805 LEDs to go on it, um, which would be a real pain to do with tweezers, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, get this project done pretty quickly, other than the fact that all of these parts have been sitting in a box for about two years, um, and I've slowly been sort of buying duplicates, forgetting that I bought stuff. So um, yeah, I just want to get this project done. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, click the bell button below if you want to be notified of future uploads. But until next time, thanks for watching.